Hi everyone and welcome back. In this video, I want to go through some common list abstract data type operations and how they would be implemented using a doubly linked list. So let's take a look at this list of operations I have here. Insert at front, insert at end, insert in order. So those are three variations of insert or adding a new node to the list. That node might be storing say an integer value or a string value. And then remove at front, remove at end, remove. These are just three variations of being able to remove or delete a node from the list, such as removing a string or removing an integer value. And then print the list, being able to see the contents of the list, which would be visiting all of the nodes and printing out their values. Is the list empty? Looking to see if the head pointer is null or not. Size, seeing how many nodes there are in the list. And then destroy list, which is also known as clear. This would be going through and deallocating all of the nodes in the list so that the list becomes empty once again. So let's review what a linked list is. So a linked list is a sequence of nodes where each node is linked together. And these nodes might be scattered all over in the heap in memory. They're not necessarily side by side like they are for an array. So we always have this head pointer, and the head pointer stores the memory address of the first node in the list, or null if the list is empty. So let's say the list is not empty. Let's say it stores a single value, which is three, in a node. So head would store the memory address of this node. If it's a singly linked list, then each node has a pointer to the next node in the list. So let's say there's another node in the list, which stores five, but let's say that's the last node in the list. So what I've drawn with these little kind of vertical rectangles here, I'll highlight them in yellow. These are the next pointers. So a singly linked list, each node has one link, which is the next node in the list. So I've highlighted these in yellow here. This is kind of just pictorially how I like to represent these next pointers. Now with a doubly linked list, in addition to the next pointer, there's also a prev pointer. And so I'll draw the prev pointers also as these little vertical rectangles in the node. I'll put them at the beginning of the node so that it's pretty easy to draw the links. So for example, node five is going to store the memory address of node three as its prev pointer because it's the previous node in the list. Now, the first node in the list, its prev pointer will point to null because there is no previous pointer. Just like how over here on the right, our last node in the list stores null for its next pointer because there is no next node in the list. So this green part here is the new part for a doubly linked list. Every node now has two links, a next link, and a prev link. And prev is just short for previous. All right, common variations of doubly linked lists include adding a tail pointer. So a tail pointer is a pointer just like our head pointer. And it stores the memory address of the last node in the list or null if there is no last node. We're not going to do a tail pointer for this video but you could think about every operation and how we would need to see if we're operating on the last node in the list because if we are, we're gonna to need to update our tail pointer. Another common implementation of doubly linked lists is that of a circular linked list where the last node in the list, instead of pointing to null, it actually points to the first node in the list. And the first node of the list, instead of having its prev pointer point to null, it actually points to the last node in the list. Now the head pointer can point to any of these nodes and we're not going to lose a node and we're going to be able to continue wrapping around the list in a circular fashion. All right, this implementation is just for kind of a pure vanilla doubly linked list. So we're not going to have a tail pointer and it's not going to be circular, but I just want to keep that on your radar because as we go through these operations, you could think about how you would have to account for any special cases via a tail pointer or via a circular list. 
So the last node in the list or the first node in the list. All right, so let's start with inserting at the front of a list. So I've gone ahead and made this little uh, list right here. You can see there's two nodes in the list, five and 12, head points to five, five points to 12, 12's next pointer is null, 12's previous pointer points to five, and five's previous pointer points to null because there is no previous node if you're at the beginning of the list. All right, so I'm gonna draw in green for the rest of our insert, a new node. So I'm gonna draw my new node over here because we're gonna be inserting at the front. So our new node, let's say stores the value three. Its previous pointer is initially null and its next pointer is initially null as well. All right, so we wanna insert this node at the front of the list. If the list is empty, then this is pretty straightforward. We're just gonna say that head points to the new node. In this case I've drawn here, the list is not empty. So what we need to do is make sure that this link right here, head's prev pointer is going to properly point to our new node. So we're gonna say head dot prev, okay, that's gonna be this link I've highlighted in green here, is no longer null, instead it's going to be assigned to point to our new node. Okay, now our new node's next pointer, the one highlighted here in say pink, this needs to be updated to point to head. So I'm going to erase this and say now new node's next pointer points to head. New node's pre pointer still points to null because it's about to be the first node in the list. I need to update head. Head no longer points to this node right here. Instead, it's going to point to our new node, this node right here. And that's it. We just inserted at the front of the list. I just want to always make sure that all of our links are intact. From the head of the list, we can traverse all the way to the end, and we can traverse all the way back to the beginning. All right, let's move on to inserting at the end of a list. So here I've just copied over that same initial list. It's got two nodes in it. So I'm going to draw my new node in green over here towards the end of the list because that's where it's gonna be inserted at. Let's insert 12 into the end of the list. 12's prev pointer is null initially and its next pointer is null initially as well. All right, so since we don't have a tail pointer, we're gonna to have to use a cur node pointer and traverse starting ahead all the way until we get to the last node in the list. How do we know when this cur node points to the last node in the list? We know when cur node points to a node whose next pointer is null. So we'll stop traversing the list when cur node points to this five node. This five node is the last node of the list and we know it because its next pointer points to null right here. All right, so here's what we need to do. We need to update this pink link right here so that cur nodes next points to new node. We're inserting at the end. So I'm going to erase this. Cur node next is now going to point to new node. Now I'm going to highlight this and say blue. This link right here, new nodes previous, needs to be updated to point to cur node. So I'm going to say new nodes previous is assigned cur node. And now our list is intact. We can start at head and follow the links all the way to the last node in the list, which is this one right here. Once we get to the end of the list, we could follow the previous nodes back to get all the way to head over here. All right, insert in order, a little more challenging, a little more tricky. All right, so let's say I wanna insert a new node in the list. I wanna insert, say, five. That way I have to splice it in between 
uh, this 3 node and this 12 node. All right, so I'm gonna need a Kerr node again, and I'm going to use Kerr node to walk through the list until I go past where this node should be inserted. So I'm gonna keep walking while Kerr node's value is less than new node's value. I'm gonna stop as soon as Kerr node's value is greater than or equal to new node's value. So that means that when we break out of our traversal, loop in order to find out where we need to insert our new node at, Kerr node is going to point to the node 12. Okay, that's because in this little two item list, three is less than five, so we would move past three. 12 is not less than five, so we would break out of the loop and know that we need to insert our new node right before where Kerr node is pointing. All right, so we need to make some updates now. Kerr node's pointing to 12. We need to insert five after 12, but making sure that the previous node before 12, three, its next pointer points to five. Okay, so we've got to splice five in between three and 12. So we actually have a lot of links to update here. So let's start with making sure that Kerr node's previous pointer, so that's this guy right here, isn't updated to point to new node until we use it to access this three node here to set its next pointer, which is this one right here, to point to the new node. Okay, it's very important that we don't break this link off before we've used it to access three to update its next pointer. All right, so we're going to follow 12's previous pointer to get to three. So this would be cur node dot prev, brings us here to three. We're going to remove its next link to 12 and update it so that its next link points to new node, okay? Now we're gonna say three should be the previous node of new node. How would we do that? Okay, we're gonna update this link. So we would say new nodes prev is going to be assigned cur nodes prev, and that way we're breaking this link to null right here. Oops. We're breaking this link to null right here. We're saying cur nodes prev is what should be assigned to new nodes prev. Now these two point to each other. Now we haven't lost this three node here because our new node is storing its memory address in its prev node. So now it's safe to get rid of this prev link from cur node. So we're gonna say that cur nodes previous is now new node. And we're gonna say new nodes next, this guy right here I'm erasing, new nodes next is now cur node. And we just spliced in our new node five in its sorted position in the list. Okay, so remember, the order is sometimes important, okay? We wanted to use cur nodes prev in order to access three before we overwrote it right here, okay? Once we overwrite cur nodes previous, we would lose that link that went back to three. So just be aware of sometimes the order of things because you don't wanna lose any data. All right, that one was a little bit trickier than our previous two because we were splicing in the middle of the list, which means you can see we had four links to update and the order does matter. All right, let's do removing at the front of the list. Okay, so now we're gonna start deleting nodes. All right, so here I've got a two node list. Okay, so there is something at the front of the list to remove. If head is null, then the list is empty and there's nothing to remove. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. 
we're going to update our list so that head no longer points to three, instead it points to five. But because we need to free this dynamically allocated node, we don't want to lose its memory address. So I'm gonna introduce a cur node again, and I'm gonna say that cur node points to head. Now I can safely update head by saying, okay, head now stores head.next. So I can take head and update it to its next. Okay, note that I still have the memory address of the three node, it's stored in cur node, and I can do delete cur node in order to free this memory. Okay, I'm not quite done yet because now I've got a problem with head's previous pointer. It's now storing a memory address of a node that was just deallocated. So we need to update head's previous right here in order to state it's the new node in the, it's the first node in the list. So its prev pointer is null. All right, we're moving at the end of the list. All right, so the end of the list right here is five. If I have a tail pointer, then I can just access it directly. Since I don't have a tail pointer, I'm going to use the head pointer in order to take a cur node starting at head and traverse through the list until I get to the last node in the list. Our last node in the list is this guy right here, the node storing five. I know it's the last node in the list because its next pointer stores null right here. All right, so what do I wanna do? Well, I want to make sure that cur node's previous pointer, so that would be this link right here, okay? This node, its previous node, its next pointer, which would be this one right here, is updated to no longer point to this node that's about to be deallocated. Instead, it needs to point to null. So what we're gonna do is say cur nodes prev, right here, this link in pink, its next pointer is null. So that is going to break this link right here and update it to null. Now I can delete cur node in order to deallocate the last node in the list and it is gone and the state of my list is still correct because we have a new last node in the list and it is denoted as such because its next pointer is null. Once again, if the list is empty, head is null, there is nothing to remove. If there's only one node in the list and we just removed it, then we'd also want to make sure that we update head so that it points to null because now the list is empty. So make sure you're aware of these special cases. All right, now we're gonna do a general remove. So with a general remove, you're gonna have some value you're searching for to remove. And in the simplest remove, you're just gonna delete the first instance of that value. So let's say that we are trying to remove the value five. Okay, I chose five because it's right in the middle of the list. So it's gonna require uh, the most link updating. Okay, it's look. It's going to be kind of similar to our insert and order, where you can see there are quite a few links we're going to have to update. Like we're going to have to update three's next pointer, and we're going to have to update twelve's previous pointer. All right, so we're going to have a cur node, and it's going to walk through the list and look for a node with value five. Once it finds a node with value five we know that that's the node we need to delete. Okay, so this node here happens to be in the middle of the list, but if it was at the beginning of the list, then we'd also need to be aware of any updates we have to make to head. All right, so with cur node pointing at five, we can grab cur node's next pointer, which would be following this link right here, 
and we can grab its previous pointer, which will be following this link right here. So we need to update cur nodes, prev nodes, next node to skip over five and go to 12. So let's do that first. So we're going to say that cur node dot prev dot next no longer points to cur node. It now points to cur nodes next. So we're gonna skip over the five. All right, now what we're gonna do is something similar for 12, but with its prev pointer. So this right here needs to be updated so that it points to three. So what we're gonna say is cur nodes next, so following this green right here, cur nodes next, cur node dot next dot prev, I'm gonna erase this, is now cur nodes prev. And the cur node prev is this blue highlighted link right here. So we're updating cur nodes next node prev pointer to skip over cur node, which is five, and point to cur nodes prev. All right, so we just spliced out cur node. The list is still intact, and I can properly free this memory now. Okay, remember, if the node we're deleting is at the front of the list, then we also need to update head head would have to point to cur nodes next. All right, let's move on to printing the list. So printing the list is fairly straightforward. In fact, it doesn't really change if our list is doubly linked versus singly linked. We're gonna have a cur node, and cur node is going to start at the head of the list, and it's just gonna keep traversing through the list until it gets to the last node of the list, which will be the node whose next pointer is null, and it'll print out that value and then it'll stop. If you want, you could also, instead of printing out maybe in between nodes, you know, like an arrow, well, I guess it'd be more like a hyphen and a greater than sign, you could also, you know, print out for your intermediate nodes, uh, the less than sign on the other end of the hyphen to show that there's a double link there. But really the traversal algorithm is exactly the same as for the singly linked list. Just start at the head, take a cur node, and walk it until you get to the last node in the list. All right, next is empty. Is empty simply needs to query head. If head is null, then you would return true because the list is empty. If head is not null, that means it's storing the address of the first node in the list, which is the case here. Then you return false because if head is not null, then the list is not empty. All right, next, querying the size of a list. There are two main ways to implement this. The first is very similar to print list. You just walk through starting at head with a cur node and you keep updating cur node until you reach the end of the list. And as you quote unquote visit a node, you would increment some sort of counter variable. Say initially zero, add one to it for each node you visit and then break out of the loop once you visit the last node whose next pointer is null and then you can just return the value of count because that's the number of elements you counted in the list. The second way to implement this is actually, uh, instead of a linear time complexity algorithm, it's a constant time complexity algorithm. And that would be you augment your linked list class to have an attribute called size or count, which is initially zero, but every time you do one of those insert operations, you add one to it. And every time you do one of those remove or delete operations, you subtract one from it. So therefore you're always keeping track of how many nodes are in the list. All right, the last operation to go through is destroy list, which 
is also known as a clear list. That's kind of the more common term used when you're talking about a list abstract data type. I'm just calling it destroy list because it's typically implemented as part of a destructor in a C++ linked list class. And it really does go through and destroy the list. But it can also be exposed via like a clear member function or a clear method. And you just walk through, deallocate all of the nodes in the list and your size is now zero. It's an empty list. So how would you do this? Well, the algorithm doesn't change uh, when you go from a singly linked list to a doubly linked list. It's very similar to the traversal algorithm in that we have a cur node and our cur node starts at head and it walks through the entire list until it gets to the last element in the list and then it stops. As it goes along, what it's going to do is use some temp variable like temp node and it's going to point temp node to the current node and then current node is going to store the memory address of the next node and then you'll delete temp node. So you're kind of just advancing cur node and as long as cur node points to an actual node, then you're going to be able to delete with temp node as you go. Okay, so the key is don't delete a cur node until you've grabbed cur node's next pointer, right? Because once you delete that node, then it's going to be invalid to access its memory. So I was just kind of introducing this temp node here saying, all right, if cur node is not equal to null, then assign that address to a temp node, advance cur node to the next node in the list, and then use temp node in order to do your delete or your free statement. All right, well, that is coverage of 10 common operations on a list abstract data type and how they would be implemented using a doubly linked list. So you can see some of our operations didn't change like our destroy list, our is empty, our size, our print list, those didn't change but all of our three removes and all of our three inserts, they did change because we have to maintain the state of our pre-links in our list now. Remember, some other ways to augment doubly linked list include adding, oops, here we go, include adding a tail pointer, which can make some of your operations like delete at end or insert at end, uh, uh, constant time complexity instead of linear time complexity because you don't have to traverse the list in order to keep track of that tail pointer. And then also a circular linked list where you don't necessarily need to have head always being at the beginning of the list because there isn't a notion of the beginning of the list, just the current position in the list. All right, well, that's it. We went through a lot of operations. Be sure to think about those special cases, especially if you're working with the beginning of the list with a head pointer or the end of the list with a tail pointer. Thanks for watching.